Happy Sunday, folks. It's Amy, and I am not doing anything with textiles this morning, this afternoon, actually. So, and this is not live, so sorry I'm not responding to comments live. It is Mr. Johnson's rule, and you know, the good book, that I am not to work on Sunday. And you know, I love what I do at the shop, and I, sometimes I don't mind doing what others might consider work, that's too red, at the shop or doing work at home for the shop because I enjoy it. But then there's always that time where you're like, oh, I should do something else while I'm at it. And the next thing you know, you are actually doing a bunch of work and it slips into something that you don't actually want to do for fun. And so I've taken up watercolor painting, which I gotta tell you is really challenging for me. Uh, you know, fabrics, I understand how fabrics work and move and how I can uh, manipulate them. And right now I can tell you this painting that I'm doing, this is like the third or fourth iteration of it as I'm learning to make peonies. And I keep overworking my peonies. That means I keep fiddling with it and adding extra brush strokes, but I'm still learning how to do the brush strokes. So I realized this one was overworked and I decided to go ahead and work on it just to practice my brush strokes because, you know, I don't want to waste a bunch of paper. And I realized that, you know, as a shop owner, quilt shop owner, I meet a lot of people who are afraid to spend money on fabric that they might ruin or get too much fabric. And I do mention often that, you know, as quilters or sewists, textile artists, we don't have the same kind of ability as painters to mix our own colors like a painter does. So when the creative spark hits, we really want to have a variety of colors that we can uh, play with so that we can mix up just the right color and play with it. So I think that's something where, you know, as textile people, we forget about versus other types of creativity, you know? And, and honestly, for most of us, if we enjoy the hobby of sewing, we're not doing it for utilitarian purposes. Uh, you know, it's cheaper to go to say Walmart and buy a new t-shirt than it is to make one. Oh, I'm being so heavy handed here, but I'm not supposed to critique my work, am I? No. <laughs> and yes, Eric's at the other end of the table. I can't wait to show you what he's doing, but we do it as a creative expression or because what we want, we can't either find in the public market or perhaps we can't afford maybe a custom item that's out in the marketplace. And so we make it ourselves. You know, we all know that it's nearly impossible to find someone who will pay the kind of money for a custom made quilt than uh, what it's actually worth. And, you know, we get really focused on that instead of the joy it can bring and the creative expression and also just the something to do with our hands. Working with our hands is really good for our bodies and our brains. I've got to change that color. We're just getting too red. And, you know, so we're doing it for reasons other than strict utilitarianism. But a lot of us still stress over, am I wasting money? Am I, you know, gonna be a hoarder one day? <laughs> and, you know, we think about that because, you know, textiles can be very useful. Sometimes that's why we choose to work with textiles, you know, fabric, threads, that kind of thing, because it is seen as something useful. And we tend to have to convince ourselves that yeah, that, that purchase is actually okay. I can do that. Whereas, you know, I think with a lot of other hobbies, you know, I mean, there's, there's fiscal responsibility. I'm not saying be irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Not that I've ever been irresponsible. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. But, um, you know, we do. We try to justify it. And I just wanted to point out, as I'm sitting here painting, you know, I, I don't need a lot of artwork on my walls. And certainly framing artwork can be very expensive. And I am what I consider a long way from making art but I'm not really doing it to make art. I'm doing it for the process. I'm doing it because I enjoy it and because I want to build skills. Um, you know, if I didn't have the shop, I'd be sewing or quilting. And sometimes I do hand embroidery here at home or English paper piecing because that's a long, slow process and it doesn't quite feel like shop work, like, uh, you know, doing a regular quilt or something, a shop sample might make me feel. And, you know, like I said, I've been working on this painting. I've done like three iterations. I've got two of them here. And while that kind of justification feeling we feel about fabric and threads and things, or maybe even sewing machines, definitely applies to my purchase of different colors of paint, because you never really know how they're going to act until you really try them. But Here's another version. Here's another version. I can tell you, I really like this one. I'm still overworking my peonies. It's a work in progress. But this, I love this part. I'm starting to get that. Watercolor is very difficult to work with, um, but I enjoy it because it's a challenge. But I want you to see, this is actually the front of my watercolor paper. Now some watercolor paper you can't paint on the backside but I painted on the back side. I knew this was going to be a practice piece. Uh, this one is painted on the front of the paper because I thought I was doing better, but I'll end up painting on the back of this probably. And, and then once both sides are painted, I'm done with them. Now, if I like to do collage, I might cut them out and do something with them. If I wanted to do some sort of mixed media, I could cut these out. I do love these. Um, I could cut these out and make a collage. I could even combine fabric with it. Um, and my brain's been playing with ideas for mixing up some classes with some paint and some paper and fabric and stitching. Um, but really, once they have both sides, oh, that's my pile of only one-sided paper so I can paint on it. There was one. This is an older one. And... But once I have, see, I've come a long way. Uh, once I have painted on both sides, if I'm not gonna use it for some sort of collage, mm -hmm. I'm gonna chuck it or even <laughs> possibly use it like Mr. Johnson is currently using it as- Table protector. Table protector as he repacks some bearings for a car with grease. I mean, is that not the funniest thing? He's got grease on top of my pretty flowers, but they were all destined for the trash. But yet when we work with fabric, if I totally botch this, I could cut it up into pieces and sew it back together again. I could take, for instance, my daughter, Leah, um, she likes to do things her own way. And I like to let her because it really seems to stimulate one, she and I don't fight. And two, it really helps her be more creative than trying to do something the right way. And so sometimes her projects don't work out. Um, sometimes my projects don't work out, honestly. Learning yep, they're learning experiences that is too orange. I remember once she took a yard of fabric and she was going to make a skirt. No, she was gonna start off, she was gonna make a dress. Maybe it was two yards of fabric. And she was gonna make a dress and it didn't quite turn out for her. And the next thing you know, it was going to be a skirt. And then I think she turned it into a top. She was trying to make a top with it. And then um, it became a tank top. Then it became a scarf. And then finally it became a hair scrunchie. Now don't ask me what happened to all the fabric over that time. Well, I know what happened. I don't, I don't even want to think about it. Surger. <laughs> oh, she just kept surging it until it was all used up. Uh, yeah, I can see that. And, um, but you know, don't be afraid 
of getting those fabrics that you like, don't feel like you have to justify it. I mean, there's fiscal responsibility, like I said, but you know, we need these creative outlets and it's very good for us. And I fully believe that we are created to be creative and, um, but I know that with fabric, we can very easily reuse it in many other different ways versus paper. Because these papers, they're going in the trash. Think about that. We wouldn't do that with our fabric. I mean, at the very least, we could shred it up and use it to stuff a dog bed or something. And <laughs> uh, that's just my, my thoughts for the day. Uh, I really started this video because I just thought it was hilarious that Mr. Johnson is over here greasing up bearings on my paintings. So uh, I hope this video gave you something to think about. Um, I really am hoping to hear a little less guilt from people when it comes to doing the things that you enjoy. Um, I find that my creative time gives me time to think. It gives me time to uh, pray. Um, now I know not everyone does that kind of thing, but I do. It's very important to me. And it also gives me time to sing and hum and listen to audiobooks, and all that stuff is good for us. And um, yeah, just a little something to think about. So I have probably done something for work here for too long, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. I hope wherever you are, ever you're listening to this, thank you for scooting your chair, Mr. Johnson. Sorry. I hope you are well and setting aside some time to be creative and doing the things that help make you happy and interact with the world in a different way than just our normal humdrummy day-to-day -day chores. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.